Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Atom RPG. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today here in Krasnos. Not many, we got a couple of things to do here, but more importantly, uh, we are waiting for our car. I don't know when it's gonna happen. I hope it is gonna happen, but let's just go around a little bit and uh, make sure... There we go, this guy, make sure there's not more uh, conversations to be had about the human trafficking. Thing that we saw. Apparently it was human trafficking. I, I can't say that I saw exactly to, to, to uh, proof of everything, but yeah, I suppose that's okay. Do you know that you sold tapes to human traffickers? Not from human... No, he sold tapes from kidnapped people and uh, slaves and all sorts of worse things than that. It doesn't matter who they, whom he sold the, the tapes to. But anyway, let's see. Oh no! Now you too will be spreading this nonsense? No, oh, no, he doesn't believe me. Um, I'm serious. They had a, a secret base in Paragon. Yeah, yeah, an atom is real. I don't have time for these fables. Did you want to see a film? A spy story? Maybe I forgot his voice. Um, well, I guess no. I don't. I don't want to see a film. You jerk. Forever. I never, never want to see any of that. Anyway, we're in the. the, the Keep just moving. We're getting out of here because we're in a very, we're very in a very good position, uh, in terms of. Um, I did I talk to you? No, I I don't think I clicked on him, but maybe I did. But maybe I didn't. Yeah, we're in a very good position in terms of equipment uh, and skills as well. So I think, as I've been promising for the last few episodes, I am going to the northeast. Finally going to the Bunker 317, I believe it is. You see a gloomy little man in a uniform hat standing in front of you. He is also in the rest of the uniform, but you don't see that because the hat is so magnificent, obviously. I wish I had one of those hats. Anyway, he's scratching his thick sideburns, covering his mouth with his large palm as he loudly coughs from time to time. He squints his eye at you and gestures to come closer. Well, 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 comrade. Can I see your registration? Uh, who's asking? Show me your ID, I'm gonna say. Are you trying to distract me? I see. Well, let me write it down. The suspect refused to present a residence permit and tried to mislead an officer of the law. By the way, this means that you have to pay a fine. Oh, just don't start with that, says Lenin. Mi my amigo, mi amigo, has uh, already paid the entrance fee to Krasnos Nameni. Ah, so Fidel is also here. Right, sorry, I didn't recognize you. Fine, you can walk freely in the city. Well, some law enforcement you have here. Nothing out of the ordinary. We are just making sure that all laws are observed and all citizens have proper permits and documents. Uh, can I ask you some questions? Well, that doesn't cost me anything. Go ahead. Well, I don't care if it costs you anything. It, it, uh, as long as it doesn't cost me. <laughs> is it considered normal here that passers-by are, are shaken down for money? Well, if these... Passers-by violate the law? Sure. For example, if a person doesn't have a registration or something, we will need to see the coins. There's no way around it. Uh, do you have... Is there coins? I, d I thought it was just bills. Do you know anything exciting going on in Krasnos Nameni? We almost never get blackouts anymore. Oh, did the electrician find someone to fix that problem? Well, good for him. Good for us all. You guys, I don't... Sure. Have you heard any interesting rumors? People say that Dan, the owner of the old factory, fancies himself the boss of the wasteland. Wastes, sorry. Who doesn't he... Who does he think he is? That old paper pusher. Mm-hmm. Pencil. Pencil pusher, I believe. Is it? I don't know. I thought pusher... I suppose paper pusher is not necessarily wrong either. Anyway, we need to go to the Chamber of Commerce, and I need to find out where that is. It is here. Is it here? Hello. As you approach the militia man to talk to him, you see that he's losing a battle with drowsiness. He also seems to be pretty baked. Let's put it like that. His head is lowering on his shoulders and his eyes are slowly starting to close. From short, even breaths, his breathing turns into long, hoarse snuffles. Having felt your presence, the man shivers and straightens up. Uh, wh how? Uh... How can you be so relaxed? Nothing interesting happening on duty? The militiaman flares his nostrils. 
Nothing interesting. Nothing. May I just can't sleep on my nights off because all the things I see on the job. Oh, because it's nighttime. I thought it was you were just on the night shift. Sometimes it's a pickpocket grabbing a, an old woman's purse. Sometimes it's an old drunkard making a move on a young girl, threatening to stab her with a knife. And as soon as I close my eyes, I see all the victims standing right in front of me, begging for help. What can I do? It sounds like he's the one doing all the terrible things. Because they're standing in front of him, begging for help. Either that, or he's just not protecting them, which is probably the case, actually, considering what we've learned about the, the guards, quote-unquote. Of, of this place. Um, I would like to report a colleague of yours. He unlawfully demanded a bribe from me. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Don't worry about it. I will talk to him, execute him if need be. Needs be? Sure. It's not. It's need be. I'll do whatever you want, but in the morning, okay? I'll execute him in the morning. Now, I can't tell you which morning exactly, but uh, I'll definitely will. I'll do it. I'll f it's fine. Will you be able to sleep like this? No. Will I be able to sleep like this if I become a militia officer? <laughs> Funny. I wouldn't wish the life I have on anyone. The long, exhausting days spent in the Militia Academy, organized by uh, for us by a tyrant colleague. And all this responsibility? Taking care of the gun, paying attention to people's complaints, not doing anything about it. With a life like this? Zzz. We can only dream about a peaceful rest. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. Is he breathing? Is he literally snoring? Because I can literally snore. With a life like this, we can only dream about a peaceful rest. What is that supposed to mean? What is the Z supposed to mean? <laughs> I don't know, but I'll go with the second one because it's funny. I get it. Uh, uh, but I mean, it's kind of inappropriate to sleep on duty. Screw you. I mean, I wasn't sleeping. It's your word against mine, and mine is a word of an honest militiaman. <laughs> You'd lose to me in, a co in any court, both at the people's court and... The man points his index finger up. I thought he was going to fall asleep, because... Anyway, up there, in the heavenly court. Even if my... Mi amigo... I'm not going to say my amigo, because that's not even... I, mi amigo is vouched for by me? Asks Lenin. A well-known and well-respected witness. Stay out of it, innkeeper. We saw how you get the workers drunk in your eatery with all the corrupt Western cocktails, quote-unquote. What does he mean by that? What is a... Is it like the fried chicken that we didn't know what it was? Maybe. But we kept silent. So now it's your turn to be silent. Um... Well, I guess that's that, really. He just has three lines that uh, you can ask over and over again if you want. But specifically, three lines... Oh, we can steal this thing. Three lines that talk about how uh, he just sleeps on duty. Because that's... that's Actually, most of the lines didn't talk about that. But he does sleep on duty. So, it's kind of funny. And also the Z, which I don't understand what it means. <laughs> and also, it was the only place that it, it, it actually showed that... <laughs> I don't know what it was all about. Ooh, we got toilet paper, my favorite. Okay, get it. Oh. People are sleeping. Which means I'll take their money. I don't know who that is, though. This is not the Chamber of Commerce, by the way. Evidently. Was the... Eww, that's bad. Who sees me? Okay, I'll... I'll not... I'll not submit to your... Spotting me that much because uh, it's dangerous. So that guy sees me, maybe because I'm right next to him as he's sleeping, which obviously he's not sleeping. I mean, okay, I don't need that, but I also don't need that. Whatever that is, this one I might be able to say. No, there's somebody over there. Ooh, an old army cap. Absolutely. What was it for? Uh, how is it? There it is. For survival. Survival cap. Best cap. Okay. So, everybody's sleeping over here. This is just where they sleep, I, I remember. So, the Chamber of Commerce is over there. So, I just cross the park over this way. There's the... Who's that? I do not know this guy. This might be might have been introduced with Patches, because Patches add, add characters and missions and stuff. You notice a tall, mustached man, aged around 30. 
in a slightly modified police uniform. The extent of that modification is unknown to me yet, but we'll see. While his shiny cap reminds you of lawmen of earlier centuries... No, he doesn't. It really does not remind you. No, it does. Wait, is it... What's the... Are we in the 21st century? We are. Also, it's not earlier centuries. But yeah, I forgot that we were still... I thought it w we were just like in the late 90s. But no, it's the early 2000s that we're at. His huge boots, giant belts, and other knickknacks seem kind of futuristic. Sure. His weird looks become even stranger when you notice that there's a huge gas-powered chainsaw hanging from his belt. It's the Druzba brand. It's off the Druzba brand, I suppose. Used to down huge trees in the wild, but modified with a long, sturdy handle like that of a sword. So a short, flimsy handle like that of a sword. <laughs> you! Yeah, you! Get over here! The man's voice, deep and scary. Okay. You! Yeah, you! Get over here! I'm gonna go with that. The man's voice, deep and scary, but at the same time, somewhat melodical. I'm not gonna do that one, though, because you can just... Uh, it's how... Anyway. Makes you freeze in your tracks. The man looks you over. Can you imagine this being all voiceovered and the and the, the voice actor just being like, Okay, I need to make a deep and scary voice that is still somewhat me melodical. How? What? <laughs> I'm just gonna do my voice. This is what I'm gonna do. And that's what that's how you end up with bad voice acting because then what happens is um, the people make make uh, auditions for the roles and the developers just choose whatever fits them, uh, but never with such detail. Because how would you even do that? Anyway, one nose, two ears. Eyes show at least some intelligence. I can see you're no mutant. And since you're not a mutant, how about joining the Red Guard of Lenin, comrade? Die for the secretary, se wait, general secretary today, because tomorrow might be too late. Uh, so, uh, hold on, what's this all about? Ignorance is bliss, future guard. Wisdom pushes towards heresy, but everyone should know what he is doing. Sorry, what he is going to die for, I guess. So I shall tell you what might seem like crazy talk at first, but actually it isn't. After the war, humanity was set back a thousand of years, both technologically and morally. That led to the creation of various weirdo cults. He seems... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so shallow. <laughs> it's like I, I was I was I was sort of building him up in my head reading all of this as sort of like a a pseudo um sort of a pseudo religious cult of Lenin somehow or something I don't know. Uh just some just like somebody who's like he was talking specifically about the technological and things. I was sort of like he's going to be like Brotherhood of Steel. No, he's just some dude who doesn't like the cults that other people do. Oh, those guys read the wrong comic books, they do. Uh, yeah, well, let's go with that. Which look like blatant parodies of cheap sci-fi novels of the past and thrive on the stupidity of the common man. Sometimes the only thing that holds such... The only things that hold such organizations in place are misguided interpretations of historical truth and the object tediousy of their members. He sounds like he's reading that off of somewhere. The worst thing about crackpot organizations like that is that they sometimes doubt the reality of the Red Guard of Lenin, a true and honest real-life organization that was created back in 1917 to battle mutant hordes. Doesn't he sound like he's reading off of somewhere? He does. And its creator, that's wrong, it's... Why, it was the immortal Lenin, a mighty telepath, a true chairman of humanity who guides us from the glass bed of Kremlin. That's all with capitals, which means important. I am preparing to run. No, no, I would either run. I'm always prepared to run. Uh, that is so interesting. Never heard that story. All emotions extinguish on the man's face. You only see his inspiring faith and loyalty that shine in his eyes, which means what emotions extinguished? I don't think any emotions extinguished, because that's what he had already, somehow, maybe, I don't know, I'm only guessing. Have you ever heard of Vladimir Lenin? What can you tell me about him? 
Is he the guy who led the uh, the one that one revolution back in 1917? Let's see. Are we talking about the Russian revolutionary scholar of Marxism and Soviet political leader? I suppose that's one way. Oh wait, uh, th yeah, that's the best answer. And, it, and I know Lenin. He's a living mushroom, right? And then yeah, so basically it's the good answer and the bad answer and everything else. Is, is that the guy who posed on an armored car? I think that's all. That probably is also a. Uh, there's probably a photo for that as well, probably a famous photo as well. I don't know that one, but yeah, all these are right, but this one is the rightest. And I'm gonna go with that, because I don't want him to kill me with his unemotional, faithful, scary, melodious voice. Smoke and mirrors, illusions and pseudoscience. First of all, Vladimir Lenin was never a mere mortal. He was... he also wasn't a mushroom. Or a radio wave, even though some people think... Uh, did I... R did I say the wrong thing? I did not say the wrong thing. He's talking about mushrooms. Ooh, daytime. Let's see. Um, he also wasn't a mushroom or a radio wave, even though some people think so. It was more of an entity, a combination of the best minds in human history that mixed together in one body. One perfect body. Fathers of communism, Marx and Engels, writer Chernyshevsky, battle maidens Clara Zetkin and Rusa, sorry, Ro Rosa Luk Luxemburg have always known that capitalism will one day destroy humanity, making every man a slave of his unfair workspace. They hadn't heard about climate chaos at the time. They had actually. It was a. It was a already known. It, well, not climate chaos. Ca climate change anyway. But they, they didn't have the foresight. Anyway, they knew that money will push pe would, would push people, make them mutate into disgusting abominations, deaf to the desperate, hungry cries of the starving masses. Oh, okay, so push people here is push the, the plutocrats, or push the, push the, uh, what do they call, what do they call it the, in Russia? The bureaucrats, that's the word. Or the, I guess the. I, mm, although this might, um, I was saying, I was sort of interpreting this as a, uh, as an informed comment within the history of Russia, but I think he's just talking in a broader sense, specifically because it's so rooted in Marx and Engels. So he's probably talking in a broader sense. So it's, it wouldn't be the bureaucrats; it'd just be people with money. Money would push people. Because obviously here the hungry cries of starving masses. Those are also people. How would that? How does that work? No, there's a class fight over here, which is the, the whole thing. But they also knew they could not stop this terrible future on their own. Oh, Dios mío! Where do people like that, like this one, even come from? The commissar. The commissar throws a look of hatred at Fidel. A melodious look at Fidel, I'm sure. But says nothing. He doesn't say anything. I also don't say anything. And then he says, Marx, Engels, Zetkin, and the rest saw only one way to stop capitalism. A true noble way. So they gathered in a snowy Russian town of Simbirsk and killed themselves in a huge pentagram. Only to be reborn six months later as one being known as Vladimir Lenin. Thus, the mighty Lenin started leading the people to heaven on earth. He threw the heretical religions of the past into trash. That's, yeah, that's the 1917 revolution. It didn't work very well. Uh, well, it sort of, I, it, 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 I, as far as I'm led to believe, it has, uh, it had tremendous repercussions in, in just the culture and, and, uh, and the society of, of Russia to this day in regards to the uh, attitude towards, towards religion. Um, but yeah, it was. The, I I don't. I I've read m different accounts on how this was done, and uh, specifically different accounts on why this was done. Um, and uh, all I can say is I have not read historical records, only just accounts. And uh, it's very interesting the the way this also shaped the perception of communism elsewhere in Europe. Um, I wonder, huh? So I'm from Portugal. You you might know Portugal has an history uh, history with dictatorship in the 20th century, with uh, a fascism a fascist dictator from I want to say 1432, but I think I think he was elected into 
office, not the office that he later assumed, but he was elected in the, the, as prim, um, Minister of Finances or something into, in 1928. But I might be wrong on the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, hazy on the dates. And then the regime lasted until 1974. And it was also, it was always a regime, so there's a lot of Red Scare uh, all throughout that, that history here in Portugal. Um, and uh, hostility specifically towards uh, Russia, because of course part of the regime lasted throughout the, uh, the Cold War. And uh, specifically the connection between religion, or lack of religion, uh, and, and communism was a very interesting thing. So this, this not only shaped the society of Russia, it also shaped the perception of communism. I'm not sure if Lenin was going straight ahead for communism right ahead, or what, uh, what happened at the, on, on the, that white revolution in 1917. Because of course communism is a specific, uh, I am pretty sure he was. But then again, it might have shaped over the years, so I'm not sure. Communism is, of course, being being a specific interpretation of of, uh, of um, the the socialist principles and philosophy and all that sort of stuff, uh, and of course, a, a political more more of a political implementation of that than than just the thing. So I don't know if Lenin. I I, I should probably read about this because this is, of course, super important in world world politics and just, just generally super important. I should read anyway. Uh, he continues. No, oh, wait. Oh, he threw the heretical religions of the past into trash, making it seem as if there were new religions that weren't heretical er in the present. But that's not... He just meant... Anyway. He started telling people to study more. He turned a terrible war-filled con... Sorry. Century into the golden age of communism. Boy. <laughs> uh, I'm not... I mean, the interpretation of golden age of communism, I... I yeah, that doesn't seem too detached from what people would say. Thinking... Oh, wait, but wait a minute, that's right. The last the last half of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century for Russia was super bloody. The problem is, it, was, it didn't stop being bloody after that. For, you know, world wars as well. Um, which are, as far as I know, not called World Wars in Russia. Isn't it the Great Patriotic War, the First War? The First World War? And then the Second World War is... Or is it the Second World War that's the Great Patriotic War? Because, you know, of course, the wars have different names depending on the countries that, you know, that you're talking about. Um, but yeah, it's just war, unfortunately. And just death. A lot of it, unfortunately. And when his body started to give out under the pressure of his giant... Mind. He placed himself into the glass bed of Kremlin to telepathically guide his people to salvation for all eternity. He does that through special channeling statues that are placed in every corner of our motherland. Also known as quick fast point, quick travel points. You can go there and press A to access the map. Sounds quite logical, says says Fidel. No, he does not. That is not an argument, so it, it is not logical. That is not how... What do you mean? What is logical? The... That, I mean, I guess you could see some logic in this as saying, oh, it's logical that he would use the statues. Everybody knows the channeling statues are the best place to... or the best way to telepathically guide people to salvation. Of course, of course, it's logical. Sure thing. It's logical because it's true. So what's a conduit? The man points to the statue of Lenin nearby. Lenin's statues are actually... I'm, that voice is going to murder my voice, so I'm, I'm sorry. I was having fun. But he's going to have a different voice from now on. Lenin's statues are actually powerful conduits for Lenin's astral powers. He talks to his worshippers through them. Until these statues stand, the capitalist can nuke us all he likes. We'll survive. But now one of the statues is in trouble. A horde of moral... And possibly even physical mutants. Did you, let me guess. It's gonna be the freaking circus again, because he's like, oh, the cult, and they they like the wrong comic books again. Degenerates known as scrap dealers wishes to melt it down and sell it to heartless metal merchants. Metal merchants! I have gathered two groups of battle brothers, but without a wise commander, they will not succeed at storming the well-defended scrapyard where these monsters keep the statue. Oh, I thought he was here. What? It's a mission, though. We're... We are... We're, I'm down. I'm down for killing some metal monsters! Wait, did he really call metal monsters? Because that's weird. Merchants, not metal monsters. Merchants, yeah. Did I say metal monsters? Anyway. 
Tell me, he says, that you are ready... Without a coma. Tell me that you are ready to charge at the forces of chaos and bring glory to the to the general secretary, as well as a noble death to yourself and all those who are crazy enough to follow you. He says... That's not a sentence, but he does that. He says... Um... I don't know about that noble part, but, uh, okay, I guess. Hand me your map, he says. And then, much ado about a gameplay mechanic. You will now go to this location, he says. There, you will aid other guards who stand against the mutated horde, heretical enough to steal the statue of Great Lenin. Let your eyes not get fooled by their looks, Greenhorn. Your enemy is not human, right? They are mutants of the worst kind, political and ideological mutants. Right. It's when you get to keep your body looking like normal, but your mind and soul turn to capitalism. It's, it's funny that they don't capitalize capitalism, which probably should be capitalized. Uh, well, it's way more than other stuff, like guards. <laughs> when um, when you finish the good fight... Oh, but... Oh, right. I, I know why it's not capitalized, because it's meant to denote disrespect. Because that, that doesn't work in English, but it, it, it works in Russia, and it's just a holdover. Um, yeah, it's, I suppose, like, he... Did he capitalize communism, though? He says, glass bed of gremlin, so I suppose that's like a wall, a wall thing. I don't know. Anyway. It doesn't really matter. Uh, when you finish the good fight, report back to me. Understood? Uh, yes, I suppose. All glory to the USSR, my brother. Time for talking is the time. The time for talking is over. It's so over that I don't even have time to say the duh. I do go on rambles after the... Anyway. Only heroism and a glorious death await you now. Hopefully not. Why would you send me to... How would you expect this to work if I'm gonna die? I think he's, he might be a reference to some character. Because the... The... Um, the... Um, the chainsaw is sort of weird. Anyway, I'm not gonna do that right now, because we're out of time for the day. So, for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Atom RPG. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.